I've come today to Bath Abbey Cemetery in the city of Bath in the county of Somerset in the UK. Through the trees here is a column with an eagle outspread wings on the top um, and it's sacred to the memory of John Monk Lamb of the Royal Navy, paymaster in the Royal Navy, formerly of HM ship Phoenix. Well there's plenty of wildlife here. The stones are deep amongst the flowers and the undergrowth. Very picturesque. One with the cross on top here to Robert Cook Esquire of Harley House, Bath. This one's to Benjamin Plym Bellamy with quite a long epitaph. Distinguished for tenderness of heart, variety of talents, extensive attainments and perfect probity. As a companion he was generally welcome while his firmness of character rendered him inestimable. <laughs> as a friend. He died in Bath. This monument was erected by public subscription. An impressive tomb in its day but the inscription is now well worn off. One here partly hidden by this yew tree. It has a coat of arms on one end. And the inscription on this side is the Right Reverend Thomas Carr, DD, First Bishop of Bombay. Two larger tombs here, and the surname on both of them is Fuller. The tallest one on the left is Henry C. L. Woodward. The one in the middle is to Richard Tatton. And this one here on the right is to Anne Bird, the beloved child of Captain Alfred Bird, and to Pamela, his wife, who died in 1858, aged four years and four months. This one is to Charles Thomas Seward of the city, who departed this life in 1853, aged 49, and then his wife, Anne Crome, beneath that. An elaborate one here, uh, Fletcher Partis was a member of the Inner Temple and uh, there are various other inscriptions which are not too easy to read on the other sides. This one is very elaborate at the top here. And the family name on here is Williams. This one here is to the memory of Samuel Maxwell Hines of the island of Barbados. One here to the memory of Maria, the widow of William Price, RN, Royal Navy, of the Royal Hospital Greenwich and of Pensin, Pembrokeshire. This elaborate one is to the wife of Sir William Hargood. A tall one here, and this is dedicated to Captain Peter Capper, paymaster of the 64th Regiment. One high up on the side here with a detailed inscription and it reads to Lieutenant Colonel Sir William Lockyer Freestone. Enter the army as ensign 1811 in the 5th Regiment of Foot served in Canada, the West Indies and Syria, on the staff of General Sir De Lacy, in Spain, MP for Weymouth, 
1862. You will see here how they've allowed the cemetery to become a wildflower uh, reserve, nature reserve, which is very picturesque. But many of the stones are quite inaccessible now. Ella Napier Bing, daughter of the late Captain Edmund Disney Bing of the first Bengal European Fusiliers. This one's to George William Duncan of the Inner Temple. Photogenically we have a stone angel appearing above all the plants and flowers here but to be so overgrown it's quite impossible to see the inscription on the base. There are a pair of large table tombs there but quite impossible to reach them with all the brambles and nettles between us. And on the other side of the path we can just glimpse more stones, more memorials through the plants that have grown up. A very large tomb here with the inscription on the end and the surname there is Collingridge. One here, a table tomb again where I can make out the name of James. The nearest one here is to Williams. There's a massive slab of polished granite here and the first name on the top here is Joseph Chamings Pierce, formerly a surgeon of Bradford in Wiltshire. This one is to William Clapham of Whitcombe House, Major General, H-E-I-C-S, of the Madras Presidency. This stone here is actually shown tapered, almost coffin-like with some engraving on top. Uh, the only name I can see is Major somebody, CB on the end of it. An interestingly shaped uh, tomb here in memory of Ellen Anderson. This one is marked to the Reverend Joseph Blake Ogle of Southampton, private chaplain to King George III, who departed this life at Bath in 1849. This one reads Francis Hunt of this city, member of the Royal College of Surgeons, 1849. A large one here with an urn on top, and the family name is Gill. John Smith Ransom who died suddenly at Ilfracombe, 1881, aged 62. One can only surmise that he was probably on vacation, as it was a very popular Victorian seaside resort. One here with a cross and a cloth wound around it and draped over one of the arms. Down at the bottom I can see the name John Pratt. There are many many more memorials and tombs here that are quite inaccessible. You can just glimpse the end of this one here but further in there are some that are just not even visible. A row of tombs here completely covered with moss and lichen. Very picturesque but not very helpful if you're looking for an inscription. A large one here the inscription is very difficult to see, but it's been marked with the number 14, so I imagine if you had the guide to the cemetery, it would tell you what tomb mark number 14 was. It's always nice to find some tomb or memorial that tells you a little bit about the person. This is a horizontal 
memorial to Philip Cadell, late of the island of Barbados, and for many years a resident of the city of Bath. He died in 1853. One here to the Reverend Robert Jessop, 1847. Margaret, the wife of, of Major Gunn of the 56th Regiment, who died in 1852 at Western Sopermere. There are some fascinating memorials here, but uh, to get to the inscriptions is very, very difficult. One here completely covered by creeper. I think there's one underneath that sycamore. One here which is fairly well uncovered. And that's to William Davy. Undoubtedly more underneath there. And then there's a column sticking up above most of it. And so it carries on. So many to see and just quite impossible to reach the details. One is marked to Adria, relict of Lieutenant General Charles Dennis Dunn. And she died at Brighton in 1876. An enormous memorial here standing alone in a very prominent position and a very simple inscription. This is the memorial to those that died in the at Crimea War erected by the citizens of Bath honouring those who died in the campaign of 1854-55. Above our names And below are five more names. Some very detailed carving on this cross with the uh, flowers spilling down and there is a dove on the top left hand side although it's one wing has come off. Dove of peace holding an olive leaf very cleverly done. One here to Charles William, son of William and Sarah M. K. who was drowned in the River Avon, 1905, aged 16 years. And someone who gave their life in the war, Claude, the beloved son of S. and A. Rawlings, who died for his country October 1918, aged 22. This one reads Godfrey Palmer of Arundel Estate, the Straits Settlement. Just a view of how um, overgrown it is. This is the path down through the graves. There's a different sort of memorial here. It's a sort of plinth and then a big metal five star cross on top. And it reads John Henry Clive Esquire of Shell House, Staffordshire, who died at Hastings. On the reverse is details of his wife. Here's one with some nice carving on it where the lettering has been brought out in relief and it's to Arthur Wellesley White, Colonel Royal Artillery. William Anderson, Prebendary of Derry Rector of Maybach County, Donegal and Upper Coomba, Londonderry and for the last 15 years of his life he held the incumbency 
of the Octagon Chapel of this city. There are some very heavy cast iron posts around this plot, which originally would have held a chain. The plot itself is completely overgrown. And if that's the stone at the end, that may be the stone of the next grave, in fact. If there was a stone here, it's quite impossible to read it. One here, tilting forward at a difficult angle. Major General Whistler, late of the Madras Cavalry, deceased 1878. A pair of large tombs. The left one is to Edward Tottenham, prebendary of Wales, a minister of Laura Chapel, Bath. And next is one to the Reverend Nathan Ashby, late incumbent of St Michael's Church at Kingston in Jamaica. And he was born in Barbados. Well, I'll leave you with these pictures. As a nature reserve, I think this scores highly. But if you're interested in reaching some of the memorials to read the inscriptions, then you are going to have a major problem. The other downside is that it, alongside a very busy road, a hill, so there's a lot of traffic noise. But it's still worth coming to have a look. Till the next time.